Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be making balaclavas. This one's more of a standard hood shape and the neat thing about this is it's a little bit bigger fit. It has an adjustable neck warmer on the inside. All in all, this is a great sewing project for all skill levels and it can be a great gift as well. And hopefully with the tips and techniques I show you throughout the video, your balaclavas are gonna be turning out professionally made. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to grab that download and let's get started. And starting off with fabrics, I recommend grabbing a fleece, a sweatshirt fleece, or a Sherpa. These fabrics are all warm and easy to work with, but you can totally use any fabric you want as long as it has a little bit of stretch in it and it'll be fairly warm. And I also am gonna be using a different style of fabric for this project for the hood panel. It's more of a quilted lining, but it's double-sided and I think it's just gonna look pretty cool on the hood panel. I just wanna show you that adding multiple fabrics into your project can really take your project to another level. You're also gonna need four eyelets. I'm gonna be using a quarter inch eyelet. You can use bigger eyelets. It's totally up to you and what look you're going for. We're also gonna be throwing elastic on this for a nice cinch neckline. And I recommend grabbing one pack. It usually comes in about two and a half yards. You don't need that much. You're gonna need less than a quarter yard. And you can get braided, cylinder, or oval. And lastly, you're gonna need your cord and your cord stoppers. I recommend about one yard of cord and three cord stoppers. We're gonna be using two cord stoppers for the tassels up front, and we're also gonna be using one for the cinch. So you may wanna grab a couple variations of cord stoppers, and I'll have all those linked below to make it easy. And lastly, you're gonna need your pattern. The pattern's available at properfitclothing.com. Definitely go and download that. It makes it so easy to follow along with the video. All you have to do is print it out, tape it together, cut it out, and you're ready to go. And after printing your pattern, I recommend cutting the top edge and the side edge. This is gonna allow you to overlap the pattern really easily for the most accurate results. And before we get started, for this project, we're gonna be using a serger. Sergers are great for stretchy knit fabrics. They're gonna allow the fabric to stretch and the thread not to break. They also cut and clean up the edges as you're sewing. I highly recommend using a serger for this project, but if you don't have one, it's totally fine. I'm gonna show you another method for sewing stretchy knit on your domestic sewing machine. Switch your machine to a zigzag stitch with the higher width and stitch length. And by doing this, it will allow the thread to stretch with the fabric. And either method works great. I just don't want you to feel left out if you don't have a serger. After cutting, you should end up with one hood center panel, one neck cover panel cut on the fold, one shoulder cover panel also cut on the fold, and lastly, two hood panels. Moving on to construction, grab your hood center panel and your hood panel. Line up the hood center panel on the curved edge of the hood panel with the right sides together and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure the side edge and the bottom edge of the hood center panel are lined up with the hood panel. Once you have it sewn on, we're gonna fold the seam allowance towards the hood center panel and add a top stitch. We're gonna be using a presser foot that has an edge guide on it. This will help you get an even stitch around those edges. The top stitch is gonna add strength to that seam and add for a more professional look. But if you're not looking for that look, you can go ahead and skip this step. Grab your second hood panel and we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side of the hood center panel. Line up the edges with right sides together and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. And it's best to make sure it's lined up exactly with the opposite hood panel so it looks symmetrical when you get done sewing it. After stitching, fold the seam allowance towards the hood center panel and add your top stitch. And for the most professional results, try to match the thread with the color of your fabric. Using the hood panel as a guide, we're gonna mark the placement of our eyelets. Mark on both hood panels and snip or punch a hole. I'm using a quarter inch eyelets. Once you have your hole punch, slide it in with your backing and hammer it or press it into place. I'm using a standard hammer die that came with the eyelets. It's super common to get one of these and they're really easy to use. After it's hammered into position, repeat this process for the other hood panel. Next, we're gonna hem the front edge of the hood panel. Roll the edge over as indicated on the guides. Make sure the edge folds past the eyelets and sew end to end. And before we start sewing, I'm gonna show you two different techniques. So you can either use a cover stitch or a double needle. The double needle is on the right and the cover stitch is on the left. And the double needle for domestic machines will give you a professional look in double stitch and also the ability to stretch. And the cover stitch machine does the same thing, but it's a more professional store-bought look and this is what's used on most products in the industry. And I recommend trying to sew directly on the edge underneath. So the underside of your cover stitch is covering that edge. This will make for the best looking and most quality edge. But if you don't have a cover stitch machine, just do the same exact thing with a zigzag stitch. The key thing is trying to cover that raw edge. Grab the neck cover panel, place the right sides together, and sew the shorter edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the panel in half with the wrong sides touching so that way you have a nice round top. 
Just like with the hood panel, we're going to use the pattern as a guide to mark out our eyelet positions. Do this on the folded end on both sides. And it doesn't have to be perfect, and once you have your marks, go ahead and add your eyelets. Just try to make both your eyelets the same height. And we're going to use the pattern again as a guide to add our stitch. We're going to be adding a stitch all the way around the neck cover panel. And the biggest thing to remember here is to make sure the stitch is under the eyelets. And that's why it's best to make sure your eyelets are at the same height so you get a straighter stitch. And we're going to stitch the two layers on the bottom together so that way it's easier to attach later on. I'm going to be using the serger, but if you don't have a serger, just do a zigzag stitch as close as you can to that bottom edge. Or directly on it works too. Grab your elastic and your safety pin. Push your safety pin into the elastic and we're going to feed it through the eyelets. Feed it all the way around and back out the other side. I like using the double opening for elastic. You can use a single if you want, but feed the elastic in one side and out the other. Slide the cord stopper down one end and we're going to sew both the elastic ends together. And it's best to add a nice tack stitch back and forth on the elastic. And move that stitch section to the inside of the eyelets. And this is done by sliding the elastic, moving the cord stopper, and repeating that. Grab the shoulder cover panel, place the right sides together, and sew the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the seam allowance to the left or right and add a top stitch. And again, if you don't want to add a top stitch, you can skip this step. After top stitching, we're going to use the pattern as a guide to hem the bottom edge. And it's best to use pins around the bottom edge since you're dealing with a curve. Once you have it all pinned up, stitch all the way around the outside edge. Again, we're going to try to sew directly on the raw edge on the opposite side. And if you don't have a cover stitch machine, a zigzag stitch will do just fine. The curves can be a little bit tricky, but just take your time and it should turn out fine. Next, we're going to assemble all the pieces, and I think it's easiest by marking the center of the neck cover panel, placing it on the inside of the hood panel, and lining up the front of the hood panel with the center of your neck panel. And it's best to overlap the hood panel and place a pin. Next, we're going to grab the shoulder cover panel and line it up with the front marking and back seam. And make sure the curved edge is pointing up. And it's best to lay the hood panel flat on the side so you can slide the shoulder panel cover up easily. And it's crucial to line up the back seams and place a pin. Once everything is lined up, sew all the way around the bottom edge. And depending on the weight of the fabric you're using, this can get pretty bulky. So I recommend using heavier weight needles to avoid breaking them. And if the fabric is super heavy, I recommend using a straight stitch. After sewing, flip the right sides out and do a once over, make sure all the seams are good. And you can add a top stitch to that seam by folding the seam allowance down. And the final step is adding your cord. So grab about one yard of cord, place your safety pin in the end and feed it through the eyelets. Light the end of your cord if you're using paracord and add your cord stoppers. And this is another fun step where you can add a bunch of different type of cord stoppers. You can do single ones or double ones depending on whatever look you're trying to achieve. And the final final step is branding. If you choose to branding, this can really bring out some fun and new dimensions in your garment. And there you have it, your balaclava is complete. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. It means so much. Hopefully you got a lot of information out of this video that you can use in other projects. And that's a big thing I want to keep adding into the videos are the key techniques that you can use on all your sewing projects to make your stuff look professionally made. And if you ever have any ideas or things you want me to make, definitely send it my way. I'll try to make it happen for you. And if you ever make any of this stuff, definitely tag me on Instagram at properfitclothing. I would love to see your projects and what fabric you used and how you changed it if you changed it to make it your own. But until then, I'm going to keep the fun sewing projects coming at you, so I'll see you next time.